Hey everybody, so it's time for a new release book haul. I have a stack of books here that have just come out or are coming out very soon that I'm pretty sure you're gonna want on your TBR. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? As always, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And of course, I hope you're reading an amazing book or two or three or four. And if you're not, I'm about to tell you about a bunch of them so you can add them to your TBR and pick them up. Um, reading is going well over here. Still busy, still getting things done, but able to read, which is very, very nice. So many good books to tell you all about. But let's get started. Get out that pen, get out that paper, get out that Goodreads, however you keep track of your TBR. If you are so able please get these books from your local independent bookstore. It's that time of year when I remind you it's the holidays. This is when they make most of their money um, and we want to support them. Or if you're a library user, get your library copy, send it to your iPad or your Kindle or however you do that, or go pick it up in physical copy form. Um, so let's get started with an essay collection that I've talked about once before already, and that is Thin Skin Essays by Jen Shapland. This is out from Pantheon. If you'll remember, Jen wrote um, my autobiography of Carson McCullers, which was a nonfiction book. It was shortlisted for the National Book Award, and I adored it. And this is just a collection of essays of, uh, of hers, and it says... Um, Let's see. It examines capitalism, toxic creek into the land, our bodies, and our thinking. I haven't started it yet, um, but I am super excited because I really enjoy Jen Chaplin's writing. It's very easy to read, but sophisticated in thought. Um, and I'm really, really interested to see what we will find in this collection. So that's Thin Skin Essays by Jen Chaplin out from Pantheon Books. Okay, we're going to go from an essay collection <laughs> to a horror novel. Yep, do that transition in your head. Um, this is Joe Nesbo's The Night House. One second, I need to tell you this was translated by... Um, Neil Smith from the Norwegian. Um, this is out just in time if you are looking for something scary to read in the Halloween season. Um, this is a story of a young boy. His parents were killed in a fire and he has uh, moved to his aunt and uncle's house sort of in the middle of nowhere. And uh, he's sort of an outcast from the minute he gets there. And then another more popular boy goes missing and everyone's sort of blaming him and won't believe him when he says that he was sucked into this telephone in this telephone booth. Um, sounds crazy, right? <laughs> but I think it's probably going to be pretty darn good because Joe Nesbo can write, right? Uh, so that's Joe Nesbo's The Night House. This is out in the U.S. from Knopf. Again, translated from the Norwegian by Neil Smith. They get your hands on that if you're looking for something a little creepy. And if you're looking to solve a mystery, try A Chateau Under Siege by Martin Walker. It's a Bruno Chief of Police novel, again, out from Knopf. Uh, this is um, one in a series, and this one is about a, there's a town, um, Sarlat is getting ready to sort of do a reenaction, a reenacting of a, the, the, its freedom from Britain in the Hundred Years' War, some sort of reenactment of a war. And the main actor is stabbed. Will he live? Will he not live? Well, Bruno arrives and he has to take care of the young children of this man. And he has a couple of the guy who has been stabbed has friends from Silicon Valley in town, which I think is really funny because I live in Silicon Valley. Um, and sort of as he starts to piece it all together, trying to figure out what's going on and why it happened, what happened, that is A Chateau Under Siege by Martin Walker out from Knopf. Okay, and then here's a big old... So if you are a person that likes one of those books that takes a character and just travels through their lifetime with them and goes through many different adventures, sort of like Forrest Gumpy, right? Um, let me talk to you about The Romantic by William Boyd. Um, this is the story of one man named Cashel Greville Ross. What? Well, that's a name, right? That's a name. He's born in 1799 and the book follows him for his life. It says here that that um, he travels the world as a soldier, a farmer, a felon, a writer, even a father. And he experiences all the vicissitudes of existence, including a once-in-a-lifetime love that will haunt the rest of his days. 
In the end, the great accomplishment is to discover who he truly is, which is the romance of life itself and the beating heart of the romantic by William Boyd. And this is out now. William Boyd wrote um, Any Human Heart, which I know a lot of us really, really love. Um, and this, this is his newest book. And there you go. It's beautiful, right? Okay. This is a very interesting stack of books because everything is so different than the last thing I talk about. Um, Death Valley by Melissa Broder. This is out from Scribner. Now, if you've read Melissa Broder, Milk Feed, Milk Fed, or The Pisces, you know she writes a weird book, right? Um, so this is a story of a woman who is sort of, she arrives at a Best Western trying to escape. Her, ha her father is in the SIU, SIU. <laughs> I see you. And her husband is very, very ill. And she's sort of trying to reach an escape. She winds up at this Best Western and the woman behind the counter tells her to go on this hike. She goes on this hike and she finds this cactus that is too big to actually exist in California. And there's a gash that looks like a door and she walks in. Melissa Broder writes a weird book, but it is always a trippy, trippy journey that in the end winds up sort of making sense in all the right ways. So that's Death Valley by Melissa Broder. Um, I really loved the Pisces, um, so I'm excited to get to it, but I know it's going to be one heck of a story. Um, I have only read one book by Ran Rash. I own like five. Um, but thank you to Doubleday for sending me his new book, The Caretaker. This is out now. God, I just love this cover so much. Um, this is set in 1951 in North Carolina. Our main character um, had polio as a child and has sort of been affected by that for the rest of his life. And he is a caretaker of the local cemetery. He has really one friend named Jacob and Jacob gets um, conscripted to go over the sea, oh, go overseas for the military and asks um, uh, Blackburn Gant, who is our main character, to take care of his wife Naomi. Um, Naomi and Jacob, when they got married, they eloped and it was a big deal. It angered sort of everyone's parents and no one was happy about it. They'd been shunned by the local town. Um, but as he's away, Naomi and Blackburn um, start to grow closer and closer. And it says, uh, even as a stunning portrayal shatters family bonds. So who knows what that's going to be. Um, Ron Rash can write a book. So I'm really, really excited. I love the premise of this. Um, so that's The Caretaker by Ron Rash out from Doubleday. Last but not least is a book um, that my friend Julie had um, talked to me about that she was working on. Um, and she said, can we send you a copy? And I said, yeah, it sounds interesting. Um, and I don't know a ton about it, but here it is. It's called A Bitch for God. Um, Clark T. Clarton. Carlton. Carlton. I'm tired, y'all. I can't even read. Carlton <laughs> uh, is the writer. Let me tell you what it says here. It says, in the year of 1990... Um, Lakshmi Steinmetz is under attack. A spiritual guru with a message of hope and immortality during the AIDS crisis. She's on the verge of fame and fortune. Some see her as a saint dressed in Donna Karen and selected by God to spread a gospel of love and the power of forgiving. But those who work with her nonprofits see another side. A woman whose lust for fame knows no boundaries and a malicious mercurial boss prone to degrading outbursts. Okay, that sounds very good. It sounds like almost like something Tammy Faye assured. What I can't remember. Tammy Faye is the only one important. I cannot remember her husband's name for the life of me right now. Um, but sort of that sort of uh, feel to it. Um, a different take on the AIDS crisis, definitely for sure. So that's A Bitch for God by Clark T. Carlton. And um, you can get your hands on this on, I think I got it. It came from Amazon for me. Uh, so there you go. This is a stack of books that are out now that you can get your hands on. Let me hold them up there. Hopefully one, two, three, or maybe all of them interested you and you're going to put them on your TBR. As always, if you are a return subscriber, I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe. I will be here to talk books with you as much as I can. As always, I encourage you to read globally, shop locally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye, everyone.